Well, here we are again in the Sanctuary of Stone and Fire. Today I've decided to actually do a voiceover on my video, which is a follow-up up to yesterday's. Um, not just because it was uh, supposedly heresy to uh, be called plum and not voice a video about plums, but also because today I did some experiments where I wasn't actually expecting the results I saw, so the text doesn't really capture what I felt. Uh, so let's just skip over all this. Right, so our first experiment is a closer look at what I did yesterday, looking at the uh, connection between thumb posts and thumb trees. So, uh, yeah, I didn't mean to destroy that plum. I would have preferred not to, but anyway, let's keep on going. So, yeah, like, just toss this plum up here. Go ahead. And what I want to know is what happens if I try and put that second plum we just saw to our right on that same post. Right, so. There's an invisible wall, but I wouldn't let that deter me now, would I? And that there, that is the thing. Did you see it shaking? That's, that's the crux of the whole issue. And I think I was very lucky to observe it because you can see me here. I try and fail to reproduce it a few times. Um, but that, uh, that shaking means that not that a tree, a certain tree is bound to a certain post, but rather the plums from a certain tree are programmed to behave a certain way when they are put in a post. This plum is programmed to start shaking and fall off. Yeah, that's that's because I hadn't gone far away enough to uh, to make that plum disappear. But the point is. The plum on the right, just there, is programmed when it hits a post to bind to it, then shake and fall off. Whereas the other one is uh, is programmed to just stay on the post until it unloads. And the rest of the plums in the game aren't programmed to do anything when they hit a post because they're never supposed to hit a post. But, uh, so yeah, you see me here, I try to reproduce the result one more time, but it just falls into the magma. So, that's that. Basic, basic conclusion is, uh, plum trees aren't bound to posts, but plums be from a certain tree behave a certain way if they hit a post. Any post. So my second experiment concerns the little guy who lives in here, the mini Jano, and the plum he gives you when you defeat him. So this is uh, this is a pretty annoying fight. It's not difficult, but it's annoying. So, uh, that's trippy, but, uh, I'm wondering what happens if once he gives you, once you defeat him and you get the plum, what happens if you try to get rid of the plum? Like, uh, it would be a pretty stupid thing to do, but I'd like to try it anyway to see what happens. Uh, sort of comes with a health warning. Uh, nicely done. So I have the plum now, and I'm looking over and I see there's a step up to the way out, or there appears to be something, oh yeah, that's a measure taken to prevent this, but it doesn't even invisible wall on me, it just goes straight out, which is amazing. So, um, what do I do now? <laughs> I'm sort of, uh, stuck here. I uh, never really noticed how many red lums there were in here. So there's even one high up. So need to use the plum to get. They're really making you earn your crust. And uh my plum is there. How the hell did it get there? Uh, right, so uh 
Let's try that again. Uh, the music's kind of uh, appropriate at this point for the spooky, randomly respawning clone. So uh, I'll try and see if I can see it respawning this time. Nothing doing so far. Am I stuck? Ah, no. Oh, I hear it outside. And there it is. So, it seems to have respawned from that tree. Just let me go over, look up. Yeah, it came from the tree. Well, you know, I partially suspected that. I, when I first thought of this, I thought, yeah, there's a tree in there. Maybe they, it can act as an emergency plum tree. But, uh, yeah, that's that. That's that mystery solved. <laughs>